Hi, this is Ellen from the Chili Dog. Today I make a pair of switchback socks and I'd like to show you how to pick up the stitches along the sides of a band heel. If you need to review how to shape the band heel, there's a link to the tutorial in the description section below this video. Whenever you're picking up stitches for a flap and gusset style heel, it's customary to start your sock rounds at the center of the heel on the bottom of the foot. Then you work across half the stitches on the bottom of the heel, pick up the gusset stitches along the side of the heel, work across the instep or top of the foot stitches in your pattern, pick up the gusset stitches along the other side of the heel, and then finally you would work across the half the stitches that are on the bottom of your heel to finish the round. One problem that sock knitters face when picking up stitches for the gusset is that it can be really easy to get a little hole or a noticeable gap right here on either side of the instep stitches at the corner of the gusset. And a lot of knitters choose to sew that gap shut after the sock is complete, but I'd like to teach you how to prevent the gap from even appearing. So let's start knitting. When I'm knitting socks on double pointed needles, I like to divide my stitches onto four needles as I'm working the gusset. So I would start here at the center of the heel, knit across these heel stitches, and pick up all the gusset stitches on the side of the heel with needle one. Then I would work the first half of the instep stitches on needle two, the second half of the instep stitches on needle three, and then with needle four, I would pick up the remaining gusset stitches and work across this half of the heel back to the beginning of the round. Today, I'm actually going to be demonstrating with long circular needles and the magic loop method. So instead, all of my instep stitches are going to be held on one side of the loop, and then all of my heel stitches are going to end up on the other side of the loop. Before I begin knitting, I'm actually going to place a stitch marker here onto my needles just to mark the beginning of the round. To begin, we're just going to knit from the center of the heel here to the end of the row. And usually you're not going to have too many stitches across here. In my case, I have six. And then once you get to the end of the row, it's time to start picking up stitches. And as you can see, the fabric along the side of the sock, it tends to curl in on itself. So as you're picking up stitches, it's really important to make sure that you roll the work out all the way so that you can really clearly see these stitches along the edge of the heel. So generally speaking, you're going to pick up one stitch along the side of the heel for every two rows of knitting. Since for this pattern, the first stitch of every heel row was slipped, there's just one stitch here along the edge for every two rows. So you're going to just be able to pick up one stitch in each stitch. Seems pretty easy. And some patterns will recommend that you pick up your stitches through both of the loops, like this. For the switchback sock pattern, we're only going to pick up our stitches just through this front loop of the edge stitches. Now, deciding where to pick up your first stitch can be a little tricky. If you happen to try to pick up into that same stitch that you just knit into, you're going to get a hole. So instead, what you're going to do is think of this last stitch that you knit as the child. Let me get my needle here to help point things out. The stitch below it as the parent, and then the stitch below that as the grandparent. So we're going to pick up the left leg of that grandparent stitch with our right needle. I think I split my yarn there. Let me look closer. Okay, and once you have that first stitch picked up, you're going to wrap your yarn around the needle knitwise 
and pull it through. And from that point, it's going to be a little bit easier to pick up stitches because again, along the edge here, you have a nice chain of stitches down the edge. So we're just going to pick up through the front loop of those edge stitches. So here's my first stitch. I'm going to go under just the front leg of the two legs, wrap my yarn around knitwise, and pull it through. Then the second stitch, I'm going to insert my needle, wrap my yarn around knitwise, and pull it through. Go through the next stitch on the edge. Remember you're going under just one leg. Wrap your yarn around knitwise and pull it through. And then you would just continue picking up your stitches down the side of the heel until you get to the end. You may remember in the last lesson, I placed a locking stitch marker through the first and the last heel stitches before I started knitting the flap. This stitch that has the marker in it is the last stitch along the edge of the heel. So when I reach it, I lift up the front leg, wrap my yarn around knitwise, pull it through, and that is the last stitch I'm going to pick up along the edge. So once the stitch is picked up, I can remove my stitch marker. Before knitting across my instep stitches, I'm actually going to pick up one extra stitch so that I can avoid any gaps here at the corner of the gusset. So look at the first instep stitch, and again, you're going to think of it as the child, and the stitch below is the parent, and the stitch below is the grandparent. With another needle, you're going to point your needle towards the gusset stitches and pick up the right leg of the grandparent stitch. And then you want to pick up the top strand here, that's horizontal strand, in between the instep and the gusset. Normally that top strand is going to lead into the child stitch. For the ribbing pattern I used, it actually leads into the next stitch, but that's okay. So we'll pick up that top strand. And once those two stitches are picked up, we're going to use our right needle and we're going to knit those two stitches together through the back loops. And that closes up any little gap there or hole so we don't have to deal with it later. So this is the last stitch of the gusset. Now you can continue knitting in your pattern across your instep stitches. I've worked across all of my instep stitches, but before I start picking up stitches here along the side of the heel, again, we actually need to make one stitch here in the little corner between the instep and where the gusset starts, just to close any potential holes so we don't have to deal with them later. So I'm going to get a different knitting needle, and again, we're going to think of the instep stitches here, this top stitch is going to be the child, the stitch below it is the parent, the stitch below is the grandparent, and the stitch below that is the great grandparent. Let me hold it up closer here. So we want to pick up with our needle the left leg of the grandparent stitch, and then we want to pick up the top horizontal strand that's leading out of the parent stitch. And once we have those two picked up, we're actually going to rotate that knitting needle and turn it so it is pointing towards the instep now. And then we can knit those two stitches together. Whoop. Too many needles. And knit those two stitches together. And that just closes up that little gap so that we don't have a hole there later on. So now, since in my last lesson, I placed the locking stitch marker around my first heel stitch before I started knitting my flap, that's actually marking the first stitch we're going to start picking up right here along the edge. So I can just insert my right needle tip right under the front loop of that stitch, wrap my yarn around knitwise and pull it through. And then I can take the locking stitch marker off 
and I'm ready to continue picking up stitches right along the edge here. And again, we're just picking up our stitches in the front loop around each stitch going up the edge. So I'll put my needle under that front loop, wrap my yarn knitwise and pull it through. through the front loop, wrap knitwise and pull it through. And we'll continue up the edge of the sock. As we approach the bottom of the foot, you'll notice that these nice neat edge stitches kind of end and in this last stitch again something kind of funny and weird is happening there. So I'm going to continue picking up in these nice neat edge stitches and I have two more. And that funny stitch is where we decreased two stitches together when we were shaping the heel band. So to pick up correctly there so that we don't get a weird hole or gap. Again, we're going to look at these stitches on the left needle. The top one is the child. The next one down is the parent. And we're going to pick up the right leg of that parent stitch. And that's where we're going to pick up our last stitch. And it can be a little bit tight getting in here to pick up these last stitches. So I'm going to open it up. Put my needle through the right leg of the parent stitch and then knit that stitch. And then you just continue knitting across until you get to the center of the heel. And in this case, I have a nice marker there. And one really important thing to remember as you're picking up your gusset stitches is that you need to have the same number of stitches picked up on each side of the heel. So for example, if I picked up 19 stitches along this side of the heel, I'd also need to pick up 19 stitches along this side of the heel. If you don't have the same number of stitches on each side of the heel, your gusset won't be shaped correctly later on. Once you've picked up all your stitches on each side of the heel, you're ready to start knitting the rest of the foot of your sock and start shaping this triangular gusset section. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to pick up the gusset stitches along a band heel. And if you'd like to try this technique in a pattern, head on over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and search for my Switchback Socks pattern. Until next time, happy knitting!